What is up, Humanoid Nation? So, I was at my parents' place the other day, and in their fucking basement, I still have a bunch of boxes that are mine, that have a bunch of stuff in them. Still to this day, it's like they've been there for like six, seven years, and I've only been here for like four years, and I still haven't got everything, and I know I got, and I know it too, I still got a bunch to get. But anyways, I got a bunch of wrestling books that I found at my place that I totally forgot I had. And I'm going to show them to you today, because why not? Fuck this light. Looks a little bit better now, yeah. Not really. Fuck, whatever. We're doing this anyway. Okay, the first book I have is... A Lion's Tale by Chris Jericho. What can I say about this book? Read this goddamn book. It's Chris Jericho. It is his... Yeah, it's his first book he ever made. He tells you everything, like how he thought he was seriously going to get fired when he showed up in the WWE the first time around, because the Jericho curse, because every time he makes his debut in any wrestling company, he gets jinxed no matter what. I don't know, that's what he says. Every company he debuts for, no matter what, he just shits himself. That's really shits himself. He gets jinxed and makes himself look like crap, and almost gets fired. And he has some good stories, too, on how he met his wife, because like he fought through Raven. And that's a hilarious story. And a bunch of other stuff. You should check it out. Go check him out. The next book is the mammoth of all books. It is Brett the Hitman Hart. You can't be a wrestling fan without this one. And fuck, look at this shit. It's like almost the size of War and Peace. And I haven't even read that book, and I even know how huge that book is. This book is fit. Fuck. God damn. What can I say? He goes with everything. He does. He says. He talks about everything. His time and calories. Calorie stampede. His father, Stu Hart. His brother, Owen Hart. The Bulldog. How they went through SummerSlam and how Bulldog was high as a fuck when they were doing their match. His thoughts on Pat Patterson, Vince McMahon, the Montreal Screwjob, everything is in here. It's a must have, seriously, you must have this. What's next? Oh, this is an awesome one. WrestleCrap presents the death of WCW. Of course, this book is basically through the eyes of someone who wasn't in the company at the time, but from all the shit that we heard from WCW, he does a lot of interviews too, and from a lot of ratings, he can tell all the stories that's been going down from WCW on what happened, the stupid shit they did, and it's flat out hilarious. Seriously, you like reading a part and then you're just laughing your ass off about the stupid shit they did. Goes on full in depth of how Vince Russo and Eric Bischoff and Kevin Nash and Scott Hall playing politics, doing whatever the fuck they want, and also about Hulk Hogan and the Bash of the Beach thing. And again, like I said, this is based off, off a guy who wasn't in the company, so we're only getting his side of the story because of what he read and shit, because the wrestlers themselves have not been in this book. I mean, you know what I mean, wrestlers are not part of this book, but he talks about the wrestlers. But still a good read, if you want to know what happened in WCW. <laughs> Ted DiBiase, the million dollar man! Also a good read, too, if you want to know about Ted DiBiase, how he, how he, the Billion Dollar Belt, his thoughts on Virgil, him becoming a renowned Christian after, after he's quit wrestling. Basically everything, like Terry Funk, a bunch of stories, like the one thing I was like, he goes on about God and stuff, like, which is cool for him, I guess, but like, uh, like I'm an atheist, I don't like that stuff, but... It's Teddy Biasi. It comes. It comes with the territory, because he is basically a pastor now, what, talking to people, doing prophecies. But still, it's a good book. Check it out. Next we have oh, Andre the Giant. The best, funniest story is in here, especially the one where Tim White is driving Andre the Giant in a van. And like, Andre the Giant is a fucking giant, you know? 
so he can't fit in the van, so he had to take off the seats in the back and put in like a fucking sofa back there. Some kind of sofa-esque type chair. And like Andre the Giant is just sitting back there and Tim White driving him. And they get pulled over to, by the cops because apparently Tim White was speeding. <laughs> so the cop comes over and is like, goes, I got like your license registration, please. Andre the Giant's board is fucking aback. So basically, you, the co officer doesn't see Andre back there. All of a sudden you see this huge fucking arm coming in from behind Tim White patting him on the back with like, go on boss, let's go. And the cop proceeds to shit his pants because you see a big giant head coming out of nowhere. Oh, another story about like how somebody wanted to pick a fight with Andre the Giant in a bar. I don't know who wants to pick a fight with this guy, but fuck. It's like, yeah, the guy says like, oh, you're not, you're a wrestler. You ain't tough. That shit's fake. You know how everyone keeps on saying it's fake. So basically, Andre just, Andre's just sitting there in the bar, just drinking his drink. Guy's like trolling him, he's like, come on, motherfucker, get the fuck up, get the fuck up. Andre still drinks his drink. Guy keeps on telling him, he's like, get the fuck up. And finally, Andre had enough, so basically, he gets up and gets up, gets up, gets up, because he's a fucking giant. Looks down at him, and the guy looks up at him, he's like, uh, no, walks away. Tons of good Andre the Giant stories. Check it out. Those of you who like ECW, the rise and fall of ECW. With Paul Heyman. Yeah, interviews with Paul Heyman, Taz, and Tommy Dreamer, and a lot of other guys. So basically, you got the inside scoop of from the wrestlers who were there themselves. They talk about all the stuff that happened, like the bad stuff. And all how he went bankrupt at the end. And how basically, basically Paul Heyman basically fucked all the guys at the end. Because he, at the end when it was dying, he was like, oh, I'm going to save this thing. And in the middle of saving the thing, in the middle of saving the thing, he shows up on Raw the next day on WWE. While the company is still going on and the guys found out about it because they were watching Raw and Paul Heyman just shows up. So that's how they knew ECW was dead. <laughs> Way to go, Paul Heyman. Oh, the stories, man, the stories. Oh, for fuck's sakes, why did I ever get this shit? <sighs> Hollywood Hulk Hogan. No, I'm not saying I don't like this book because of what happened now, because of all his racist comments. I'm saying I don't like this book because back in the day I actually thought Hulk Hogan actually wrote this book, but it was fucking ghost written. So you get a bunch of bullshit in this thing. Like Hulk Hogan doing a bunch of stuff that he can't do. Basically lying his ass off. Because he's Hulk Hogan. And I bought this book a long time ago. Because I was naive. Because hey, it's Hulk Hogan. But then later on in life you figure, find out that it was ghostwritten. So fuck this shit. If you want to really go ahead. But it's a waste of goddamn time. Just like that Rocks book back in the day. Where like know your role. It was kind of good, but half the time is like he, he was talking in the rock character, so it was really annoying. But the rest of the book was really good when he was talking as himself, as real Dwayne Johnson. But other than that, that's the good part, but the bad part is when he goes into character as the rock, that's just shitty. I'm trying to read an autobiography, I'm not watching Raw here. <laughs> no, this guy. It's good to be the king. Sometimes. Just look at that smug look on his face. I would have that smug look too if I fucked around with underage girls all the time. Yeah, I said it. Jerry Lawler's known to do it. But yeah, it's a good story of how he came up in the Memphis territories. He talks about in depth about how he got fired from the WWE because he basically with the cat his wife at the time, like doing stupid shit, how he came back. What he did when he was fired. Every person he has sex with. He doesn't go into detail. He says like he did stuff. His feud was Andy Kaufman. Which he goes in depth. Because I don't think. Before this I don't think anyone ever told the story. Of how it really went down. Because everybody thought Andy Kaufman versus Jerry Lawler. Was actually real. Yeah I think this is the moment where Jerry Lawler. Actually told the truth about what really happened. Like. It was all a, a play because like they were actually pretending to hate each other for ratings back then. So yeah, 
and of course, like yeah, he talks about the movie Man on the Moon. So yeah, it's a good book too. Check it out. Next we have Adam Copeland on Edge. Another fantastic book. Tells you how Edge grew up from a poor boy to becoming very rich. This was before he retired, so basically four years behind? Where he was still in his prime? Kind of sad now that he had to retire because like, he couldn't, his back is fucked up. You no, know, his neck? Yeah, his neck. His neck is fucked up. To the point where he can't wrestle anymore. I could be wrong though. Correct me on that because I've kind of forgotten what he was out for. I saw the promo on Raw too on why he quit. Fuck, but that was a long time ago. But it's a really good read. He goes in depth about him and his friend Christian, Ed and Christian, how they grew up together in Toronto, high school kids. And the reason he became a friend with Christian is because, like, Christian was the only kid that had a ninja star, so they became instantly friends. Talking about, like, the Canadian crew going on to wrestling tours with him, Christian, Rhino, and a bunch of other guys. The road stories that he goes on, especially the one where they almost cross a frozen river and almost die. Just you read it, guys. It's a good book. Chris Jericho's Undisputed, the second book. It's basically a sequel to what happened after his first book, I think. Because he has three books now. I forget. I don't know. I think it's his second book. But yeah, another good read. He goes in depth a, a lot about stuff. It's Chris Jericho. What else can I say? He's awesome. That's all I gotta say. Mick Foley's Countdown to Lockdown. I'm ashamed that I don't have his first two books, but I know I do because I think it's my, in my parents' place, in the basement somewhere. I gotta find him, but right now I know I have this one. His stories of like how, what happened to him in TNA. Total non-stop action for those of you who don't know, because some of you don't know what TNA is. TNA, total non-stop action. Used to be good, now it's shit. It is so shit. But he goes in depth about his time there. Yeah, all the way to Lockdown, which is a pay-per-view. Which, for those of you who don't know, Lockdown is a pay-per-view that is all steel cages everywhere. Originally, Lockdown was a... Yeah, originally, Lockdown was a pay-per-view with every match in a steel cage, but they added an extra gimmick in it. Like, every... Like, a ladder match inside a steel cage or some kind of gimmick match. But now, they change it to just steel cage matches. <laughs> and they had that Lockdown in St. Louis where they had the electrified steel cage match between the Dudley Boys and... Homicide and Hernandez of the Latin American Exchange. It was a stupid and bloody brilliant match. Because <laughs> of the fake electricity and the special effects. Because the homicide going on, the electrified steel cage, pretending it's electrified because you can't really electrify them. Because that's fucking murder on live pay per view. And he's like, ah, ah, ah. And you hear in the background electricity noises like, mm -hmm, ah, lights going down. It's the funniest shit ever, but the most odd. Uh, most stupidest match ever. Go check it out. Electrified Steel Cage match. Lockdown. Just for that homicide spot. Bobby the Brain Heenan. And yes, he used to be a wrestler before a manager. He wasn't a good wrestler from what he said. That's why he became a manager. And this guy is my idol. This is where I basically got my name. He went away freak from. Well, one of the reasons I got my name. Because Bobby the Brain Heenan... Whenever he was on commentary, he would say, listen up here, humanoids and all that stuff, like the ham and eggers. I love Bobby, I love Bobby Heenan. He's still around, but he's filled, he's sick with cancer, radiation, and all that stuff. His 1992 commentary was the best ever. So yeah, that's where I got the name humanoid, and the other half freak is from Freakazoid, so I combined the two into humanoid freak. Now you know, but I'm gonna say this, the day he dies, I'm going to cry so bad because he's awesome. Yeah, so moving on. The la I think it's, no, not the last book. Two second last book. I recently bought this. The Hardcore Truth by Hardcore Holly, a.k.a. Bob Holly, a.k.a. Sparky Plugs from back in the day. Amazing book. I always liked Hardcore Holly. I don't like how he gets shit upon all the time because, like, 
People think he's a bully. Well, he is kind of a bully, but he takes the business personally, and he doesn't like little shits here and there joking around about the wrestling business, so he basically tells him what is. He's not afraid to tell anybody what he's thinking, because it's Hardcore Holly. He's been through a bunch of shit. Too bad the WWE never gave him enough credit, because, like, they always brought him down. He could have been something, but he's still good. He's retired now, because, like, he's done with the whole wrestling thing. He came back in a TNA one night only pay-per-view, but that doesn't count, because it's TNA. Huh. Yeah. And also he goes into detail about him beating the shit out of Matt Capitelli from Tough Enough 2, where everybody just bashed on him for that. I never thought anything wrong with it, because, like, yeah, I thought, hey, good for him for beating on Matt Capitelli, because Matt Capitelli was bitching the next day, saying, oh, I got beat up. Hey, I'm not in the wrestling business, but even I know you don't bitch about getting your ass kicked, because it's the fucking wrestling business. What do you think was going to happen? Are you going to play ballet? Play shoots and ladders? No. It's a business where you guys hurt each other to entertain crowds. Of course, it's predetermined, but you still get hurt half the time. And if you don't do it right, certain people like this guy put you in line. But yeah, Matt Capitelli fucking bitched out all the time. And I, I gotta say, like, Hardcore Holly beating the fuck out of him. Awesome. Awesome. Go check it out on YouTube. YouTube. Hardcore Holly beats up Matt Capitelli. It's awesome. And the last book, and the best last book ever. If I can grab it, fuck. Walking a Golden Mile by William Regal. Let me get this out of the way first. Before this book, William Regal. I just saw him as a snobbish British prick. I never really liked him. I couldn't stand the guy. Like, a lot of us didn't like him because he was William Regal because we didn't like his... We seriously did not like him at all because as a person or a wrestler, we all thought he sucked because he looked really old as shit. But then he read a book. I mean, read a book. Wrote a book. Some of us read it. I, so I didn't want to read it because I didn't like William Regal, but Between the Ropes.com praised the fuck out of his book. He's saying, like, holy shit. William Regal has been a, through a lot. And the one reason I bought this book is because BTR says, like, if you don't want to read this book, or if you do want to read this book, read, buy this book and read the chapter called Black Hookers and Crack. He dedicates a whole chapter on just that. <laughs> so I did. And I read the entire book. And this guy has gone through a fuckload of shit. So many drugs. More than anybody else. I'm surprised he's even alive to this day. Well, he's clean now, but fuck, he was bad before. Because, like, reading this book, he was fucking doing shit every day. Yeah, and the stuff he's gone through, like, how he came into the business. I respect this guy even more. Because, like, how what he'd been through, what he did. Now he's clean and sober, doing better. Fucking legend. Yeah, he's the best, is all I gotta say. And that's it for now. Check his book out. You won't regret it. Oh, yeah. He goes into the story about how he got fired from WCW while wrestling a match with Goldberg by basically making Goldberg look stupid by actually doing a wrestling match because Goldberg can't wrestle at all. So really, Regal basically out-wrestled him in a match. It made him look dumb, and as soon as he got into the back, got fired for it. Read the book. It's good. Anyways, that's it for now, Human Our Nation. I know I got more books, but like I said, they're in my parents' place if I can find them. Because I got the Hardy Boys book. Anyway, what books do you have? Take it easy, Human Our Nation, as I say that 1,000 times. I'm out. Human Our Freak Out. Bye.